Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning Ally News Team. Good evening. I'm Chris Kalora sitting in for Ken Eckhart with this special edition of Ally News Tonight. Back in the 1920s, the North Shore of Long Island gained the title of the Gold Coast. It was home of the wealthy and privileged lifestyle immortalized in the novel The Great Gatsby, when about 1,200 Gold Coast mansions dotted the North Shore. Today, only a handful of these magni magnificent mansions remain standing as a reminder of a memorable time in Long Island's history. Tonight, we'll visit a few of the surviving Gold Coast mansions and learn what's being done to preserve them. I believe that few people were actually invited to these parties. They just went. They got into automobiles which bore them out to Long Island, and somehow they ended up at Gatsby's door. Once upon a time, that's the way it was here on Long Island. And just like the narrator in the novel The Great Gatsby, portrayed here in this 1974 movie adaptation, today we can only appreciate that fabled time in Long Island's past from a distance. It was an era of extravagance when wealthy New Yorkers built over 1,200 mansions that lined the north shore of Long Island from Kings Point to Northport. But nobody wanted to spend their summers in New York City, and the most convenient, um, attractive place to go would be the north shore of Long Island. These mansions were used as weekend and summer retreats. The north shore of Long Island offered a wide variety of activities, including boating, hunting, and polo. You could be out here in less than an hour. You could take your boat. If you had a commuter yacht, a lot of the families commuted back and forth to Wall Street in the morning. Um, when they started to live out here all year round. Most of these mansions were built on a massive size and scale. The wealthy owners could afford to hire the best. You had the greatest architects, landscape architects, um, sculptors, painters, working on these houses. Author and historian Paul Matiunas says designer Wilson Eyre called it a unique time in American architecture. He would take the best roof lines and the best materials and the best floor plans and combine a little bit of French, a little bit of English, a little bit of Italian and work it into this sort of um, structure that's wholly an American style. Long Island Gold Coast mansions copied a variety of architectural styles. Quandra Hall in Huntington was modeled after a French chateau and Eagle's Nest in Centerport in a Moroccan style. Perhaps one of the most unusual Gold Coast mansions is Hempstead House in Sands Point, built back in 1912 in the style of a European castle. At the time, it was one of the most opulent buildings here on the North Shore and in all of Nassau County. Out back here, there was an oceanfront casino that had an indoor swimming pool, bowling alley, as well as guest rooms. And the mansion Clayton, now the Nassau County Museum of Art in Roslyn, was also built with extravagance in mind. When the Fricks lived here, there was a ski slope. There were two tennis courts, a major swimming pool, a polo court, a ski lift, and a, an animal pen, sort of like a miniature zoo. Another impressively built mansion is White Eagle in Old Westbury, now called the Dieseversky Center at the New York Institute of Technology. The home is full of intricate and elegant design work that was typical of the time. If you look at the moldings in the ceiling of our ballroom, I mean that ceiling is carved plaster. You just don't see that anymore. But for many, the partying came to an end with the stock market crash of 1929. And by the 1940s, the economic conditions of the time pretty much spelt an end to the building boom of these types of mansions along the North Shore. Over the next few decades, many of the remaining mansions were either destroyed or abandoned. It had become out of fashion. When the kids didn't want these houses, they were too big to afford. Many of the remaining properties were sold and subdivided. Modern tract houses, housing had come into effect. Levitt um, started building Levittown on the grounds of what was the Aviation Country Club. And um, people came back from the war. They needed a place to live. There was a, the baby boom generation. And so there was a lot more housing with the proximity to New York and the automobile and the railroad. Everything just sort of tumbled and urban sprawl took place. 